Hi everyone, welcome back to AI Incarnation. Today, we are solving a real headache for e-commerce business. Manually tracking orders across platforms like Shopify and WooCommerce. Imagine spending hours each week merging these spreadsheets just to see the sales data. Let's automate this with Aniten, a powerful workflow automation tool that is free and open source. By the end of this video, you will learn how to pull data from Shopify and WooCommerce APIs, merge and transform the data into a unified format, generate a daily report using Google Sheets automatically. If that sounds good, smash the like button and let's dive in. E-commerce order tracking is crucial for managing customer expectations and ensuring timely delivery. Manual tracking can be inefficient and error prone. Why automate order tracking? Here are some of the challenges such as manual tracking is time consuming, higher chances of error and miscommunication, difficult to manage large volumes of orders. What are the benefits? Ensures accuracy in order processing and tracking, saves times and resources, enhances customer satisfaction with timely updates and smooth order processing. Here are a few core concepts that we are going to use in this video. First is data mapping. API often return data in different formats. For example, Shopify might call a product as product ID, while WooCommerce uses ID column. We will map these fields to a common structure to have a unified structure for our complete data set. Filtering and transformation. Maybe you only want unfulfilled orders or need to calculate total sales per platform. We will use expressions like JavaScript snippets to clean this data and filter this data. Third, merging data. Using Anitent's code node, we will combine this data from both the APIs into one single dataset. Think of it as stitching two spreadsheets together, but way faster. Okay, here is the workflow that we are going to build today. The very first node is the manual trigger node. Once the manual trigger node is clicked, it will hit the first API that is the HTTP request for Shopify and second is for WooCommerce. Since this is a mock data, I'm having the numbers as 500 in each. You can use this API with your own Shopify and WooCommerce APIs so that you will have the different data. Next is the code node. In this code node, we are changing the column names to a specified format. For example, order ID in Shopify is the column name, but we want it as ID column. Similarly, in WooCommerce, we are having a different column name, but we want them to be in a unified structure that we want to store in the Google Sheets. So that part we will be doing through the code. Once that is done, we are having a filter node to filter this data for all the orders which are not cancelled. And we will be storing all of this data into a Google Sheets as the final step. And from there, we can do the reporting and automation. If you don't want to write a single line of code, you can use the second workflow. That is this one. Then we are having a manual trigger node. We are having HTTP request for Shopify and WooCommerce. But the next step is we don't have to write a code to do all of this. We can do this through Aniton also using the edit fields. For example, in edit fields, we can map the column name order ID as ID column. And similarly, for WooCommerce, if you want to map any of the column name as per the unified structure, we can do it in the edit fields. Once that part is done, we are having a merge node that will merge all of this data from both the APIs into a single data set that will be having 1000 items. So now we are having 1000 items and we just want to filter for those rows where the status is not cancelled. We will do the filtering part. Once that is done, we will store all of this data into Google Sheets and we can do the reporting and automation there. We'll give it a name. Order tracking multiple sources okay so the very first thing is that we will add a manual trigger node that will be used to trigger this workflow later on you can change this with a schedule or a webhook as per your choice the next thing will be a http request in my case i'm having already a dummy api that will give me sample data set for shopify so this is my url let's test this okay here you can see we are having order id total price date platform financial status okay good so i'm having one http request node i want one more http request node that will be for woocommerce so for this also i'm having a test api okay here we go so we can see that the order number is one 
data is this platform is WooCommerce. So I'm having data for both the APIs. So next thing is that we will have a code node. Okay, so in this code node, I'm having both the input and I need to write some code here that will be the JavaScript snippet. I'm already having that, so I'll just copy paste it. So here is my JavaScript snippet to combine these two data sets into one data set. For Shopify, it will be order ID that will be changed to ID column. The total price will be fixed into two decimal places and it will be the total price. The date will be a string and platform will be Shopify and the financial status will be the status column. Similarly for WooCommerce, we are having order number as the column name, but we will use as ID. The order total will be converted to a two decimal places and it will be total prices. Similarly, date will be string, platform will be WooCommerce and order status will be the status column. So let's test this. Okay, from both the APIs, we got 500 data and those data points are converted into a single data that is 1000 items. That's good. Next thing is that we will add a filter node. In this demo, I'll be using the status column as the condition and I'll set the condition to is not equals to cancelled. I don't want any of the cancelled rows to be in my data set. So that's my filtering condition. And let's test this out. Okay, we can see that we are having 875 items. So around 125 items are gone because those were cancelled and I don't want those items. So these are the kept items and these are the discarded items. So these all are cancelled items. I don't want them to be in the data set. So I'm using this filter condition. You can change all this filter condition as per your choice. So the final thing will be adding a Google Sheet to append this row, append row in the data sheet. Okay, so let me check my Google Sheet. Okay, so here is my Google Sheet. Currently it's empty and I want to populate this sheet with the 875 rows that we have got from the filter. I'm assuming that you have already configured your Google Sheets account here, but if you don't know how to set up Google Sheets account in any 10, I'll give you the details in the description. You can follow that. If you still have any questions or queries, you can drop a comment. I'll respond to that. So I want to append a row and the document will be the multi-source order data. So this is the multi-source order data sheet that we are having. Currently it's empty. I want to append each of this row into that sheet. So the sheet name will be sheet one. So instead of manually mapping each of the column, I'll use map automatically because currently my sheet is empty. I need to fill that with some columns so that I can map manually. Otherwise we can use the map automatically column. I'll use the second one that is map automatically. So if you test the step, great. So all of your 875 items should be inserted in the sheet. Let's go to the sheet and check it. Okay, so here is the complete data that we are having. This is good. And let me try to filter the platform. We can see that we are having both Shopify and WooCommerce in a single data set. And if we count the number of rows, it is Okay, let's check the complete data set. It's having 875 rows. 876 because the first one is the title so we are having 875 rows so we can see that we have Shopify and WooCommerce data into a single sheet without manually doing all of this so all of your orders are now in one report no need to manually search for each document from the sources like Shopify and WooCommerce merge them clean them nothing you have to do automatically it's updated in the Google Sheets now you can do a schedule for this workflow to run it hour or daily if it is running hourly or daily then you will have the latest updates as per your choice that part you can do okay so this was the first workflow that we built as I've showed you that we will be doing two workflows in this video so let's go to the second workflow I'll save this and we'll create a new workflow 
okay so we'll give this workflow multi source orders automation no code okay in the previous step or in the previous workflow we were using a code block to clean all of this data merge this and send it to the google sheets but in this one i'll tell you how to do it without any without writing any single line of code let's start with the manual trigger the workflow will start like this after clicking on this then we will have the http node so for shopify my request api is this one let's test it out great we have the data okay so next thing is that we will add a second http node that will be the woocommerce api and for woocommerce this is my api let's test it out okay we can see that the platform is woocommerce okay great so we are having this manual trigger node then we are having two http requests next is that we need to edit these two nodes based on the columns that we want so let me try to execute it so we want order id to be as id column then total price to be as the total column okay currently we can see that the total price is the column which we are having as decimal places if it is multiple decimal places we can convert it to a fixed two decimal places that can be done simply by using two fixed and in bracket we will pass two so this will give us the two decimal places you can see the result is having 3814.61 let me show you if we set it to one decimal place it's at a single decimal place but for this demo we will be using two so let's set it to two so here instead of writing the code you can directly use the n8 and javascript snippets to change this into a two decimal places so that part is done next we are having the date column next is the date column as we can see the date column is already converted to a string so we can keep it like this that's done for us next is platform so platform is fine it is a string as shopify then next is the financial status so we need to rename this column to as status that's it let's test this step okay we can see that the order id is converted into id column the total price is converted to total date is converted to a string format platform is the same the financial status is converted to the status column that's it it's looking good right so we have edited all the field columns so we have the edit fields node to convert these columns into a specified format similarly we'll do the same for woocommerce we'll add a edit field we need to run this node order number that is the first column that will be id next is the order total we will rename it to total column and we want to make sure that this is also at two decimal places so we will convert it to two then fixed and in bracket will give us two so this will be two decimal places for all the values next thing is we want a date column that is a string itself so we don't want to convert it next is platform should be fine because we are having the same column next is the status column so status column is the same so we don't not we don't want to change it i think that's it we want from the woocommerce data and we'll just test this step whoa we have the data as order number is converted to id order total is converted to total date platform status perfect okay this is in the same specified format that we are having for shopify so both the data sets are now in the same format and that's it we can just merge this data set into a single data that will be with the help of merge node so we will append these two inputs into a single one and we'll make sure the condition is append because we know that the column names are same so we have to append it 
Number of inputs is two. That's it. Let's test this step. Okay, we can see that we are having thousand items. So from Shopify we were having five hundred, and from WooCommerce we were having five hundred. So that's total up to thousand. That's it. I think we are good to add a filter node here to filter for those rows where the order status is not cancelled. So we should select string not equals to. We can just say cancelled. Test the step. It should be around 875. Perfect. We are having 875 items in the kept column and discarded are 125 items. So that's it. The final step would be to add a Google Sheets node, and we want to append a row. Before that, I want to remove all of this data. So let's delete it. Don't want to filter. Out. Okay, we have an empty sheets now. We will select the same sheet, and that is multi-source order data. We will use sheet one. We will use sheet one, and we will use map automatically, and that's it. So we'll test this complete workflow once. So let's do it. Perfect. So let's go to the Google Sheets now. We can see that the same data is uploaded here. We have ID column, we have total column, we have date column, we have platform column, we have status column. Everything is there, right? And if we go to the number of rows, we are having 875 rows. The same that we did using the coding, and same we are doing with no code. So we have seen that we are having two workflows. One is for the coding part, where we are using a code snippet of JavaScript to clean all of this data, merge it, and filter it. And the next workflow was using edit fields to map these column names, merging it using a merge node, then filtering it out, and then sending it to the Google Sheet. You can choose any one of these. Like if you don't want to write a single line of code, you can use the workflow number two. And if you want to write some complex codes, like if you want to filter the data specific format or anything that you are not able to do using anything, you can use your coding snippet to do all of that stuff for you. And that's how you automate multi-platform order tracking. I'll give you some tips here. Like, if you want to schedule it, you can use Anytime Schedule Trigger node instead of running it manually. And for error handling, you can use if nodes. For example, if you want to retry if API fails or something happens, then you can retry it. If this saved your hours of manual work, drop a like, subscribe. Got questions? Comment down below. I'll help you out. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video. Keep automating.